Hello, Professor Sargent here with you again. We're going to take a look at graphing functions that are transformations of more basic functions. So here we go. First, we're going to graph f of x equals x minus 1, that quantity cubed, and then minus 2. Remember that horizontal transformations, things that change x, probably go in the reverse direction of what you might have initially expected, so that subtracting 1 inside is leading to a shift right one unit. If you're asked a question about that, you want to state both the direction and how far. Those changes to x have to happen before any vertical changes, changes to y. Because first of all, you need to get the function acting and giving you the shape. So that minus two on the outside is going to give us a shift down two units. Again, you want to state which direction and how far. So the base function, we're comparing y equals y1 equals x cubed to f of x, or I could call that y2, the quantity x minus 1 cubed minus 2. If I think about the values of x that I would have plugged in for the values of x I would have plugged into x cubed, and the y values I'd get out, well, those values of x change. So previously, I would have been putting in negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 for x, and then cubing them, negative 27, negative eight, negative one, zero, one, eight, and 27. But now those values, if we wanna get the same values out for y, then these have to be the results of x minus one. Since we're shifting right, one unit, the x's that we started with then would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. And of course, if you put in negative 2 into x minus 1, you do get negative 3. If you put in negative 1 minus 1, you get negative 2. So those give me the x coordinates that I want to plot. And then we're supposed to subtract 2 from those y values, shifting down. So that's going to give us negative 29, negative 10, negative 3, negative 2, um, negative 1, 6, and 25. Since these y values are so large, I'll be going by ones in the x direction, but in the y direction, I'll go by threes and do my best to estimate where those points are. Actually, I have to go by sixes, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
All right, one, two, three, four, five. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And let's see, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, negative six, negative 12, negative 18, negative 24, and negative 30. So again, I'm going by ones in the direct x direction and by six in the y direction. I'm looking at the first and last column, negative two comma negative 29. So just above negative 230, negative one, negative 10. It's going to be closer to the negative 12, but somewhere between the negative six and negative 12, zero and negative three, one and negative two, two and I got off track here, one and negative 10, zero and three, negative three, one and negative two, two and negative one, three and six, and then four and 25. So that's gonna be just a little bit above the 24 there. Connecting them with the same kind of sideways S shape or snake climbing the wall. It's gonna look roughly like that. Let me state what the domain and range are here real quick. Um, and then I'm also gonna give you a comparison on a calculator. So the domain and range of X cubed are both all reals. Therefore, if you move right one, you can still put in anything you like for X. And if we shift down to, well, if you've got a piece everywhere along the Y axis, and you've just shifted it down two, well, still there's gonna be a piece of the graph along the whole Y axis. So both the domain and range are in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. If I put that equation in, To check, I'm going to change the window so that I can see still negative five to five in the x direction with tick marks every one unit. But in the y direction, I want to see negative 30 to positive 30 with tick marks every six units. And then if we compare by tracing, let's claiming that for X equals negative two, that Y should equal negative 29 and it does at negative one, it should equal negative 10. It does zero, we should have negative three. That's what we've got. One, we should have negative two, we do. Two, we should have negative one, still good. Three, we've got six, that's what we were supposed to get. And then four, we were supposed to have 25, and we do. So that's one down, one more to go.